sometimes controversial, always compelling. The Tommy Schnermecker Show on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Retirement. Well, that's supposed to be a wonderful phase of your life where all your years of hard work, they finally pay off. You ride off into the sunset and you enjoy your golden years. While it is that way for some, this is not a reality for approximately 40% of the population. How do you transition from having to be at a certain place at a certain time, five days a week, to meeting uh, new challenges, finding new challenges for yourself, new social circles to engage with. My next guest here to answer these questions and others you may have on the subject. She is the founder and facilitator at Rewire to Retire. Name is uh, Jillian Leithman. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? So what is the, this business Rewire to Retire all about? Well, um, we're hearing a lot of talk about RSP season, about financial planning, but nobody's talking about this whole other component, which is lifestyle planning. What are you going to do when you retire? Who are you going to spend your time with? Are you going to be okay not having a status, not having a business card, not having anywhere to go? Things of that nature. So uh, what advice uh, do you do you have for someone who's not sure uh, if it's not a financial issue? They're not sure what they would do if they retire. I think you want to start thinking about it prior to exit. You want to prepare before you leave because that's the we can help you best prepare and navigate what can be a really difficult transition prior to actually exiting the workforce we can still help you once you leave but you are in a much better position to navigate that transition if you have an idea of what you can expect now what do you do uh, you have these pre-retirement workshops what would happen at a pre-retirement workshop so for the past 10 years i've been delivering these workshops across canada and we help employees prepare for their exit if they want to exit not everybody actually wants to exit and not everybody should exit so we talk about how do you determine if uh, you want to exit or you don't want to exit it's a very very personal decision and you want to think about things other than just the finances, such as do you have an identity outside of work? Do you have hobbies? Do you have friends? Do you have things to do? Do you have interests? And if and if you don't, then you what's your recommendation? Then stay at work? Not necessarily. My recommendation is to start thinking about these things. Start thinking about um, what interests you. Who are you going to hang out with? What are you going to do with your time? That's a really good exercise. Think about The week after you've retired, it's Monday morning, you're not going into the office, what are you going to do? Give me some examples of what people did do after they retired. Well, clarify the question for me. When they used to retire, like at what age? No, let's say right now, some examples of people who are happy in their retirement. What what are they doing that makes them happy? It's a great question. Um, The literature is really clear on this. You want to be surrounded by positive people. You want to have a reason to get out of bed in the morning. You want to have something to do and somewhere to go. And that doesn't necessarily mean you want that seven days a week or five days a week, but you have to have a reason to get out of bed. You have to have something to do. What about the people say, oh, I just want to go away. I'm going to vacation all the time. I'm going to be on the beach all day. I'm going to read all day. There are definitely people who say that, but I would... It's a small segment who actually, usually they'll tell us, well, I want to be on the golf course all day. But how many people, first of all, in this climate, you're not golfing 12 months a year. So there, is, there are certainly people who, most people actually do it and do it well. But we are seeing a trend where 40% are actually struggling with the transition because they don't want to golf all day or they don't want to read all day or they've done that for a honeymoon period. and then they're Right, bored. it works for a few days and weeks and then they're bored and have nothing to do. It, the honeymoon period generally lasts anywhere between 12 to 18 months where you're loving, you're loving retirement. You get to stay in your pajamas, you can wake up late, you can do what you want, you don't have to battle traffic. Around 12 to 18 months, the honeymoon period starts wearing off for some people. And then what happens? It could be a downward spiral of uh, depression and anxiety. Really? Because they don't know what to do with their time. So how do you, give me some concrete tips of how to avoid that and prevent that from happening so sometimes when we ask our participants you know what are you passionate about they get really nervous they're like i don't what do you mean what am i passionate about i've been working my whole life and i've been developed i've been maybe they're entrepreneurs and they've been building businesses 
So don't get scared by that question. It's quite overwhelming for many of us. Pick up a university catalog. Look through the courses. Is there anything that sparks an interest? Is there anything that you are curious about? Look at old pictures. Look at old pictures of your childhood. What did you love doing? You know, you might not be a professional baseball player. Maybe that was your dream. Maybe that's, right. you know, that's gone by the wayside at this point. But maybe you'll coach Little League for your grandchild. Now, what challenges are retirees facing today that they, let's say, did not face 25 years ago? The challenge is that we're living a lot longer. So if we were exiting the workforce and we were living for five years, then all we have to do is financially plan for this next stage. But some people can actually, some people might actually be working for longer than they, be retired for longer than they spent working. Wow, interesting uh, questions coming in. A fascinating subject. Jillian Leithman, the founder and facilitator at Rewire to Retire. Uh, this text, you're saying, uh, Tommy, my company encourages pre-retirement course. The statistics for death for our retirees after three years is staggering. In other words, a lot of people die within three years of retirement. Could that be part of that downward spiral you were talking about? Absolutely. Um, I want to clarify something because there's this very bizarre study that is still very much entrenched in the culture. People, there's a study that was written a number of years ago, quite a few years ago, that suggested that people who lived longer, who worked longer, actually died. That's not the case today. If you are working in a stressful job and you hate your boss and you hate your colleagues, then that is a really stressful situation for you. If you love what you're doing, and there's an opportunity for you to continue to work, why would you leave? And so you want, so these people might be dying because they're not so sure what to do with their time. This text is saying, being retired and listening to CJD, try it, it's great. Another text is saying, I have money, I want to stop working, but I'm only 52. Uh, what can I do in Florida if I retire now? I can't give you specifics about Florida, but I can tell you that that is a phenomenal place to be retired because Florida has been doing this for a really long time. So Florida has actually created an infrastructure for their retirees because they have so many. So there's a lot. Um, you might want to go take a course at a university campus, not necessarily a degree, but there's in Florida, there's a lot of places, a lot of university settings, campuses. You can go and learn something new. 52 is really young to retire. I was interviewing a woman who wrote this book called Home Sweet Anywhere. And what uh, she and her husband did is they sold their home and they sold everything in it. And what they wanted to do, and they both agreed, is travel around the world staying in other people's houses. And they find cheap ways to get around, like repositioning cruises, three weeks. They stay one month in France and then one month in California and one month in Argentina. Uh, Obviously, it's not for everyone. Is that something to consider post-retirement? Sure. Why not? It's only limited to the contents of your creativity. You can do whatever you want in retirement. Just, you know, I want you to start thinking about just because you're 65, though, that doesn't mean you have to retire. It doesn't mean that's not the barometer for retirement. 65 it's is not a number, right? It's just a it's number. Just a that's number. all it is. Right. It's just a number. This text is saying, I would love to stop working. I dream of not getting up to an alarm. Many people do. Many people do. But there might come a day where you get bored and you want to actually get up to have something to do. Again, not in the same capacity as when you spent working, but you, want, you might want to have, you might miss the challenge. You might miss the social network. I'm curious to find out the answer to this question. If you want to join the discussion, Jillian Leithman, my guest, founder and facilitator at Rewire to Retire, if you have any questions about it, whether you're 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever age you are, you can text your question to 514-800. We'll find out, is it easier to retire if you hated your job or if you loved your job? We're going to have the answer to that question after we check traffic. We'll do that right now over to the CJAD 800 Traffic Center, brought to you by Fisherman's Friend. Are you congested too? Fisherman's Friend has been relieving coughs, sore throats, and nasal congestion since 1865. So try Fisherman's Friend. And remember, always read and follow the label. Here is Catherine Wood.
Westbound on the Metropolitan, it's a bit sluggish. Lankety over to DeCarry and eastbound from before DeCarry Circle to Laurentian Auto Route. 20s rolling along really nicely. Eastbound, though, in the St. Charles exit. At last check, we had a stall. DeCarry and the Ville Marie are doing fine. To take note, though, uh, St. Jacques is closed at Ruelle des Fortifications. That's uh, just between St. Laurent and Place d'Armes, and it's closed for an undetermined period of time. They don't know when it'll reopen. South Shore spans looking good. Help people experiencing homelessness. Purchase a pair of socks at RaisingTheRoof.org and see how far these socks will go. Traffic and transit every 15 minutes on CJAD 800. Your next report is at 1130. Enjoy live comedy at Montreal's original comedy club, The Comedy Nest, in the Old Forum. This Thursday to Saturday at The Comedy Nest, catch high school teacher turned TV comedian Tony Dio. As seen on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Details at ComedyNest.com. At Speedy, you're a somebody. That's right, a somebody. Is your car talking to you and you're not sure what it's saying? Take your car to Speedy Auto Service for a free battery test and undercar inspection and find out what your car is talking about. Go to Speedy.com for the location nearest you. That's Speedy.com because at Speedy, you're a somebody. Blonde, distinguished, elegant. Oh, when we met, I knew I was in for quite the evening. We made dinner plans and instantly clicked. I like versatility and, well, talk about the perfect sparkling wine. Alone or with a smoked salmon appetizer, it's got it all. Let yourself be wowed by the SAQ's wide assortment of products. Wine, bubbly, spirits, including up to 90 products on sale. Until February 22nd at the SAQ. Nice advice, 18 years or over. Details at SAQ.com. Mmm, what you got there? What's McDonald's new sandwich with CBO? Colossal burger option? Chicken, bacon, onion. Crave blasting overdrive. <laughs> uh, chicken, bacon, onion. Oh, choice bite organizer. So chicken, uh, bacon, and then onion. Hmm. The new CBO with Canadian farm-raised seasoned chicken breast, smoky bacon, and crunchy onions in a soft onion bun. CBO, it's a legend in the making. Courteous bite offer? <laughs> Not a chance. Are you in your 60s or 70s and need more income? We're the experts in Canada for securing the best annuity rates in the country. You could have income of 6, 7, 8% and more. You get your check every month, it's guaranteed for life, and it's worry-free. Quote, as of today's date, certain conditions apply. Call 514-934-0586. This Friday, on top of a jackpot estimated at 50 million, Lotto Max offers approximately two additional chances to win prizes of 1 million with Max Millions. You're listening to the Tommy Schnermacher Show on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Intriguing questions coming in for our guest, Jillian Leithman, founder and facilitator at Rewire to Retire. This text is saying, turned 60, I was laid off at work, so I took my early Quebec pension and sat home for two years going nuts. So I went back to work, very happy now at 65, still working. David says, I retired several years ago. Now I work twice as hard helping with the grandkids. It's a 24-7 career. What would you say to those two texts? I would say that it's not both of those experiences are not so unusual. A lot of people leave the workforce only to re-enter it because retirement is not necessarily what they thought it was going to be. This one says, uh, what is this retirement of which you speak? Would-be retirees are having to continue working as it is. The coming generations have even higher debt loads and have been dealing with stagnant wages for the past few decades. How will they, quote-unquote, retire there's just no money to be saved for retirement. That's a that's really a different issue. And I would say that the current generation, actually, they do things very differently than we do. They need a lot less than we needed. So they don't need as much necessarily materialistically that we aspire to have. This text is saying, Tommy, I'm in the process of figuring out how not to work and enjoy doing what I want. The book is called The Joy of Not Working. Have you heard about that? No. Okay, well, this texture certainly recommends it. Kathleen says, uh, call your local volunteer center and you can get involved in your community. How important would volunteer work be? So, so that's an excellent point. Volunteer work is really, um, if you love what you do 
And perhaps, you know, there's more opportunity uh, than the boomers recognize. There's a lot of opportunity to actually stay on in the workforce, but you have to have that conversation with your employer. If you choose to exit and you love your job, one of the benefits that you reaped at work, you can actually reap doing volunteer work. So we highly suggest that if you, if you're a social person and really we all need people, get involved, get involved in a cause that you, that is near to your heart whether that's kids, whether that's animals, uh, whether that's the environment, but get involved in something that is much larger than who you are. Are there many people who don't know if they want to retire or not and can't answer that question? What would you say to them? I want you to marinate in it. I want you to think about it. Just think about it. Think about what your life would be like. Think beyond the finances. Think about what your life would be like if you didn't have work. On a daily basis. Do an exercise. Take out a piece of paper, Make a calendar from Monday to Sunday and ask yourself, fill it in. You now have another extra 50 hours of free time on your hands. What are you going to be doing? And my concern is that we see a lot of retirees, they spend a lot more time in front of the TV. Right. This this section saying, I work for a small company. Is there any way for two to three people to attend a pre-retirement class? Sure. Join us February 28th. Oh, tell, tell me about the classes. So we're doing a one-day workshop, February 28th, uh, called What's Next? And it's all about preparing people for this next stage. And let me just add that it's not my job to tell people whether or not they should retire. But when you, I, my job is to have a conversation about what you can anticipate going through if you do choose to retire. And, and I just prefer you to be in a position where you're armed with the right knowledge of what you can expect from the actual retirement transition itself. And you, some people come out of those seminars and they say to me, I'm never retiring. And the, the objective of the seminar is to get you to start thinking about this next life phase. This texter says, I think you're very wrong about this generation not needing or wanting to do things that we needed and wanted. They're young. They just haven't figured it out yet. And they're going to find themselves in a very bad position in the future when they do want things, but they will not be able to afford them. They're doing things very, very differently than we are. They uh, they crowd surf. They travel the world and they sleep on somebody's couch. They're giving up their cars and they're opting right. for uh, for public transit. So I don't think we need to really worry about this next generation. I think we really need to start working worrying about how are we going to prepare for the coming tsunami of retirees. This texture says, my father left to golf, so after retirement, he got a job as a marshal on a golf course. That way he works and plays golf, and it keeps him feeling young. Another t- texture sent us a two-word message, cribbage, baby. Uh, and we'll also find out about uh, how to get part-time or short-term contract jobs. We continue our discussion with uh, Jillian uh, Leithman, who is uh, my guest, and uh, she's founder facilitator at Rewire to Retire. Text your question, your comment to 514-800. You're listening to the Tommy Schneermacher Show on CJAD. Missed something? Download Tommy's podcast at CJAD.com. Montreal on Lumiere proudly welcomes guitar virtuoso Kaki King. Here, her new project, The Neck, is a bridge to the body, an extraordinary visual and oral experience, an elite rendezvous with an exceptional guitarist singer, Kaki King, February 27th at Club Soda. Presented by RBC, in collaboration with Bell, in association with the Montreal Gazette. Seeing the world through your radio. The Chris Robinson Travel Show. This Saturday on The Travel Show. And they're off to the state of Kentucky, less than a day's drive away. Home to the Kentucky Derby, Louisville is the beating heart of bourbon country and eclectic southern city known for its world-class dining, museums, and bourbon experiences. The horse capital of the world, Lexington is a panorama of horse farms, the Kentucky Horse Park, and Keeneland Racecourse, site of this year's Breeders' Cup. In northern Kentucky, on the Ohio River, take a water adventure with BB Riverboats, tour the Newport Aquarium, or look back at underground railroad sites and the history of Newport gangsters. The world is ours to see, and you can see more of it on my website, chrisrobinsontravelshow.com. Tune in to the Chris Robinson Travel Show, Saturday at 11 on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Get your free Kentucky Traveler's Guide at kentuckytourism.com. 
Today's Entrepreneur highlights inspiring Quebec business owners every week. This week we speak with Kimberly Lalouz of Miss Prête à Manger. Dan, three thoughts come to mind when I think of Kimberly and Miss Prête à Manger. Self-taught, self-sufficient, and driven. This is a story of reinventing yourself to follow a passion and then continuing to challenge the status quo in order to grow. Join Fuller Landau's Josh Miller and me, Dan Delmar, for today's Entrepreneur, Monday night at 7 on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Issues and Opinions, The Tommy Schnermecker Show on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Jillian Leithman, my guest, founder, facilitator, to rewire to retire. Uh, this sex is saying you can find a part-time or short-term contract job. You can find them on sites like Workshoppers. Work sure. Ho- what is it? Work, work Hoppers, sorry. Yeah. There, there's a lot more opportunity than people recognize. And um, if you want to stay in the workforce, you know, and if you love your job, I would advise having a conversation with your employer because your employer might not want you to go. And there might be a way to actually negotiate a contract that works for both of you. There's not enough, there's not enough talent in the Canadian workforce to replace the retiring boomers, which means there's an opportunity for retiring boomers to have a working retirement, so to speak. And maybe you don't want to work five days a week. Maybe you want to work three. But in that time, you train your successor. And right. it works for both the employer as well as the pre-retiree. What's the biggest mistake people make uh, when planning their retirement? Not planning the lifestyle issues. Thinking that they will totally figure this all out once they exit. I see. And uh, now, let's. we didn't discuss too much of the financial aspect. Usually that's what they talk about. How much money will you need? There's some kind of figure saying you'll need 70% of what you were spending before. Is, is that number accurate or is it really different for everybody? I'm not a credible source to uh, comment on the finances. I can tell you what we do know uh, is that people actually do fare quite well, much better than we think on reduced financial on on reduced finances. We actually adapt. We're quite adaptable. It depends what you want to do. And it's very difficult to determine how much money you should have for retirement if you have no idea what you want to do in this next life phase. What do you want to do? Do you want to travel the world? That takes money. Do your grandchildren live overseas and you want to see them? It takes money to visit. So you have to have an idea of what you want to do in this coming phase in order to determine how much money you need. This is intriguing. This text you're saying, so true. Uh, there's a huge skill gap and pre-retirees are in demand, huge demand in the workforce. In many cases, these uh, retirees don't know that, right? They figure, well, they're getting old, they probably want to get rid of me. And that's not the case, is it? And that, that actually is what I'm starting to see in my own research, in my dissertation research, is that people are self-selecting out. So they're seeing their number, they're seeing this, I'm turning 65, and there's this concept that they adopt that I'm old. I'm old, I'm a dinosaur, they don't want me around here. And it's a very inaccurate assumption. It's really, you know, 65 was chosen because it was chosen in the late 1800s because we, right. we, weren't, we weren't expecting people to live beyond the age of 65. We, didn't, we weren't expecting to have to pay people their pensions. But it's not really reflective of longevity today. We're living so much longer, so much beyond the age of 65. So it's so, arbitrary. So in HR, what they're worried about is that a lot of their experienced people will leave. HR has not really done a great job at being attentive to this issue. And what tends to happen is your key people will leave. They'll leave with knowledge that nobody else in your organization has. And then sometimes they have to run after to get you back because you're the only one with you're the only one with that tacit knowledge. And so they actually have to pay you a lot more money to come back as a consultant because they're in a lurch. Nobody knows what you know. Right. This text is saying too many old people working doesn't leave enough room for students. 65 is not old. And we have a skills gap. So we don't have enough educated, talented people to replace the people that are leaving. That's a very different issue. And this last one, I think most shopping centers become retirement centers, especially in the morning hours where you see uh, these uh, people in groups of eight or ten after their morning uh, walkathon. As long as they're happy, I'm good. You know, are they happy? 
Are they happy? Are they healthy? Are they enjoying their retirement? This text is saying we're talking of a golden phenomenon unique to the 20th century, not earning, not producing, and yet consuming for decades. It never existed, and it's not sustainable. Well, these people actually have worked. They, they have worked, and uh, they're not, uh, and they are consuming, and they are producing if they're taking part time work. Right. And that workhoppers.com at the. That was mentioned before. A pleasure talking to you. Uh, Jillian Leithman, founder, facilitator at Rewire to Retire. 11.30 the time. Here he is, Richard Deschamps from...